species was a genius idea. Take Alien, throw in some TNA. And it worked. It took in $113 million on a $35 million budget. Given the box office and the obvious tease at the end, a sequel was inevitable. Okay, you killed the creature and half the cast. Where do you go from there? First, let's bring in Peter Medic, director of Romeo is Bleeding. First, you had a woman, so let's try a man. Let's bring back a couple of characters from the first. You know, I was kidding when I said they were saving those embryos for the sequel. So let's bring back Natasha Henstridge as a different yet similar character. Finally, let's add more sex. With a formula like this, you can't lose, right? This is Species 2. We start with credits built out of pickle ricks. NASA needs a lot of extra equipment to haul the product placement. Who do you think funds this shit? Tax dollars? Ha! It's the first mission to Mars. Patrick Ross, played hauntingly by Justin Lazard, Son of a senator, football star at Yale, and now the first man on Mars. Deploy robot dog. Begin search for robot fire hydrant. It was a long trip, people. Deploy second robot dog. Commence robot dog humping. Like I said, long trip. Now drill, baby. <laughs> yeah, this looks totally normal. Not everyone is a fan of progress. I told him not to go! Back to your bong, hippie. That's it? You're on Mars, what, 20 minutes? I spend more time at Costco. Wait, you're leaving your robot dogs behind. I hope you feel bad. The two other astronauts are Sampus, played by Miriam Sir, and Dennis Gamble, played by McKelty Williamson. It was incredible. Mars soil is a bit sensitive after drilling. Someone get a tissue. Ew, it's running everywhere! 14. Third. Skate, skate, skate! Quick panic when they lose control for a minute, but everything seems to be hunky-dory. Now let's pretend that didn't take a year and a half to get home. Natasha Henstridge is back. Jeez, 12 minutes in and we already got a shot of her V. This is not Syl, but Eve, which stands for... The Extraterrestrial Vulnerability Experiment. Aren't you glad we kept those embryos? But why is she naked? That's a very good question. Okay, you had a question. She's a guinea pig in a project to find the weakness in the aliens if they ever return. They test a toxic gas on her, which proves ineffective. Forgive me if I'm out of line here, but fire seemed to do pretty well last time. Marg Helgenberger returns as Dr. Baker, who is in charge. I've explained to you why we've got to do this, what happened with the first sill. So why am I always naked? That's a very good question. The astronauts are back with restrictions. No sexual activity for at least 10 days. And that means all of you. Oh, you've got to be kidding. You know, astronauts, anything that moves. Patrick is tempted, and more so when a friend is invited. Screw the rules and screw the... Well, you know. Patrick gets busy, and Eve's spider sense is tingling. Now that is a fertile man. Ew, he shaves his tentacles. We all make this face. Let's not call too much attention to it, okay? The accelerated birth is, shall we say, a little rough. You know, I bet he still tries to claim they're not his. Patrick's dad is a senator played by James Cromwell. Uh, I don't like it when James Cromwell plays a bad man. Dad, I did something bad with a woman. You're going into politics, son. You can't have a scandal. They'll never elect you. Sarcasm. A scientist discovers something odd about Patrick's blood. You mean you didn't verify all this before you let them out? Well, that's just gonna stain. Very scientific. You just said his blood had some weird shit in it. This glory hole is hardcore. This looks like a job for Press Lennox, played again by Michael Madsen. We need you. No, yes, no, yes, no, no, yes, no, yes. Okay, see you tomorrow at 7. Damn it! Are you involved in this crazy bullshit? The trail leads him to this guy. He knew the truth, so the military had him committed to keep him quiet. But we need him to fill in details we would find in the novelization we'll never read. Mars was visited by an alien species. Then any human attempt to violate the planet would result in biological contamination. Of course, even Patrick must never meet, or else... They could fuck the human race into extinction. Someone put that on a t-shirt. Patrick is suddenly not in the mood, but Ann Sampas, the female astronaut, is... Ah! Here, see how you like it, honey. I'll try to warn you first, honey. See how stupid that sounds? 
They've had the Netflix, now comes the chill. They finally figure out that aliens can't stand the cold, so they're easily taken down with the light misting. They find Dennis about to make re-entry when his mission is aborted. Turns out he's not infected. Patrick finally bones his fiance, and he might have been a little rough. What are you, forming a softball team? Patrick loads his 12 gauge morning after pill, but it's not for the kid. <laughs> well, the movie just solved itself. Good night, folks! After these messages, uh, we'll be right back. It turns out Patrick sprung for the extended warranty on his head. And with that appears to end any humanity left in Patrick. Now he's picking up hookers. Lots of hookers. Lots and lots of hookers. Eve can psychically feel when Patrick is <clears throat> entertaining, but they always end badly. And no, it's not because he gets stuck with another kid each time. He's gonna have to buy a lot of breakfast cereal. Patrick keeps his brood in an old barn. Who does he think he is, Jim Bob Duggar? Shit, that's a lot of college tuitions. Since Eve can sorta detect Patrick, they decide to turn up her alien side with lasers and radiation. They track Patrick on another one of his babe hunts, this time in a supermarket. Aisle one. Fruits and vegetables. In aisle one. Fruits and vegetables. Ah yes, he's looking for the women buying cucumbers. Hey, she's already looking for me. It's good to be a celebrity. Will you sign my Space Flakes box? Sure. Oh, he'll sign just about any box you hand him. But enough foreplay. <laughs> Before this goes too far, their connection is discovered, and he lets her go. Get out! I could have Natasha Henstridge! They spot Patrick, but missed the screaming woman fleeing the van 30 seconds ago? They catch him and bring him in to where else? Nobody thought this through, did they? The close proximity sets off Eve, and the inevitable happens. It's okay, it's a top secret government lab. I'm sure there are security checkpoints and armed guards everywhere. He's just gonna walk up to her, isn't he? I'm not leaving until someone midnight expresses their boob on the glass. There's always Dr. Consolation Prize over here. You know he's good when his tongue has its own tongue. <laughs> Crack security here. This might hurt my re-election. What am I saying? My voters are idiots! Looks like Eve has a type. Ouch. It's bad when the super horny space beast turns you down. Dad tracks down son. Time for a heart to heart. They told me what happened. How you got infected up on Mars. Damn it, boy. I told you to always wrap it up. Dad, help me. That'll do, son. Wait, did he just kill his dad with his dick? Scanning for symbolism. You know, it's a beautiful time in a child's life when they enter that awkward cocoon stage. They get all slimy and their voice starts to crack. We learned that Dennis wasn't infected because his blood carried the sickle cell anemia trait. And if you remember from the first movie, these aliens are picky about who they interact with. They can't handle human genetic imperfection. So they turn some of Patrick's blood into a poison they can use against Patrick. Eve needs some of that Space D, and does her best Jamie Summers bionic woman impression. She disarms the guard with a freaking baseball. Government funding, ladies and gentlemen. Trusting your security to the lowest bidder. At least they learn from their past mistakes and give Eve the Bonnie and Clyde treatment. But they forgot she can Wolverine that shit. And suddenly, their entire force has the aim of seasick stormtroopers. Boy, she's gotta have it. She finds Patrick with her genital GPS. Our squad arrives. Just them? What happened to these guys? Are they on curfew and can't leave the base? Welcome to the maternity ward. From hell. Patrick's offspring. They sound like they just realized what movie they're in and just gave up. All right. To 90s teenagers, this was borderline porn that you could just pick up at Blockbuster. Just to remind you they're aliens, we paid Giger for these designs and we're using them, damn it. While this was going on, our team kills the offspring with Dennis's Roundup juice. Don't come a knockin' if the whatever the fuck this is, is a rockin'.
Patrick and Eve are now in full alien Giger mode, and seemingly too powerful to take on their own. Eve, I know you're in there! Please help us! Please help us! Wow, still horny. Patrick kills Eve with his... Well, he kills her. We need more of Dennis's blood. Press, use my blood, quick! I think I have a syringe here somewhere. Ah! You fucker! I get it. You just have to be faster than Dennis to get away. Wow, this works better than VX gas. Patrick is down. And at least Eve got some before she died. The cavalry arrives too late, as usual. Dennis may finally get some, too. We're focused on Eve's dead body for a reason. Who let the cat in the ambulance? Whoops, missed one. Make that two. That was Species 2. Bringing back Dr. Baker and Press ties this in with the first movie, and the same tactics don't seem to apply. Remember that relationship they had in the first one? I guess Press is the love them and leave them type. Or maybe she is, let's be fair. Point being, no flirting. What happened to that chemistry? They're still one step behind the alien, despite being the best people for the job. Dennis adds some comic relief, and he is a more likable character. Only problem, he is severely underqualified to go after Patrick. Hell, even the biologist has more experience. That said, I like Dennis. Once again, the human characters are second fiddle to the aliens. Unfortunately, Patrick is not a very interesting character. Patrick always has this haunted, spooky, dead expression in his eyes. And that was even before he was infected. This man has seen some things. He was still more interesting early on, when he was still conflicted and aware he was doing terrible things. But once he killed his human side, he became little more than a serial killer impregnator. And that's his only drive to mate. By the way, notice in the first movie, Syl was having a hard time finding a male to mate with. Here, as a male, Patrick is mating left and right. His alien ability to sniff out the clean prostitutes really comes in handy. He mates, produces offspring that kills the mother at birth, he moves on to the next woman like the playa he is. It's almost a double standard. Didn't expect social commentary in this movie, did you? Having the bad guy from the first one return as a good guy- ow, I broke my air quotes. Having Natasha Henstridge return as a different yet similar character is easily explained and caters to the fans of the first. Eve has very little to do. She's in this lab for most of the movie, and when she finally gets out, it's straight to space boning. At least Eve was a little more human than Syl, and she's more sympathetic. She knew she was created to help humans kill her kind, sometimes in as little clothing as possible. George Zunz's Colonel Burgess character is just ridiculous. I'm sure he had fun with the role, but he was kind of pointless. The plot is mostly about Patrick mating and collecting kids. Yes, we're trying to save the world, but the story scale still feels so small. The barn full of offspring is a fun addition, but it mostly looked like a bunch of grown people spraying weed killer on balloons. Some of the effects were just mind-blowing at the time. Others, kind of worse than the first. At least they went with some puppetry with their final forms, rather than relying on CGI. This made the creatures look a bit more tangible. As for the acting, everyone got paid. The deliveries are even cheesier, and you can tell they're trying to take it seriously, but just can't quite sell it at times. It's shorter than the first one, and there are less characters, less padding. Patrick's father could have been written out and nothing would be lost except for a body. At least, no Captain Obvious pretending to be psychic. There's a bit more sex in this one, so there's that. Species is two Bs. Inferior to the original, it's almost the same plot, just gender swapped. Patrick is a dull villain. Eve is a bit more developed than Syl, but she's still underutilized. The returning human characters are even less interesting this time around. At least they had chemistry then. Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, comment, the bell, you know that usual YouTube stuff. This is the newbie, and I'll see you later, kids. Toodles! And special thanks to my patrons. You guys rock!